Hello, and welcome to Goose Drunks. Ooh, ah. Ooh. Today, we'll be reading One Day at Horrorland, which I have, like, literally no memory of, so <laughs> everything's going to be a surprise. I realize I say that a lot. I read so many of these books as a kid, um, but I must have it done it in a fugue state because it's, like, nothing stuck. Anyway, I'm Bailey. The rules of Goose Drunks, if you're new, are really, really simple. Um, one, drink if it's stupid. Two, drink if it's scary. Uh, also, we usually drink on cliffhangers, and also, anytime I feel like it, because I'm the boss. Today, we're going to be drinking a thematically appropriate drink, um, one of my favorite theme park drinks, uh, Diet Coke and vodka that I've snuck in in a water bottle. All right, let's get going. As we entered the gates to Horrorland, wait, what? He didn't start with dialogue. This is neither stupid or scary. I'm just like blown away, so. As we entered the gates to Horrorland, we had no idea that in just a few hours, we would all be lying in our coffins. I'm the calm one in the Morris family. Everyone says, Lizzie, you're the calm one. And I'm trying to tell this story calmly. I actually kind of love this intro. I feel like, I don't know, I feel like I the dialogue first intros are always so like formulaic. And this one, I feel like I already have a pretty good understanding of the character. We had never planned to go to Horrorland. In fact, we'd never heard of it. The five of us were squeezed into Dad's little Toyota. It's always weird when he name drops a specific brand, but all right. On our way to spend the day at Zoo Gardens theme park. Dad had messed up and left the map at home, but Mom said the park would be real easy to find. I bet it won't be. When we got close to the park, Mom said there would be lots of signs to direct us, but so far we hadn't seen a single sign. Dad was driving and Mom was beside him in the front. I was squeezed in back with my little brother Luke, who is 10, and Luke's friend Clay. Oh, the sibling has a friend. Oh my god, that's two annoying sidekicks. Very excellent. Also, I love this 90s ass problem of leaving the map at home. If I left the map at home to go on a road trip in the 90s, I would go home and get it. How far in do you have to be before you realize you've left the map at home? It feels like kind of a thing you discover quickly, right? So, okay, uh, obviously there's quite a bit of filler here. Clay and Luke are really annoying. Mom is suggesting car games. Dad is blonde. No one knows where they're going. Luke is pinching people. Luke is pinching people. Luke is pinching people. Mom's like, we can ask someone if we see a gas station. Dad's like, I, gas station? I don't even see a tree. But he screamed it. So it's like, am I supposed to like this guy? Because I don't. I don't at all. I hope something bad happens to him. I wonder if my wish will be granted. I meant to go north, Dad muttered. The desert is south. We must have gone south. I, as a child, would not have known this. But as a non-child, I think... That's one of those ones that even without a map, you shouldn't screw up because there are signs along every highway telling you what direction you're going. And I feel like if you're meant to go north, you discover you were going south the second it says I-5 south or whatever. So they're lost. Mom's like, you should turn around because like, yeah, that's the solution to that problem. Everyone's miserable. This trip is going great. And then I raised my eyes to the open sunroof above my head. Oh, I let out a cry as I saw a hideous monster staring down at me, lowering its enormous head about to crush the car. Dun, dun, dun. It's a billboard, but you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drink. Chapter two. I opened my mouth to scream, but no sound came out. That's good, only Dad's allowed to scream in this car. The monster glared down at me through the sunroof. 
It was as tall as a building, I realized. Its red eyes glowed with evil, and its mouth was twisted in a hungry grin. Dad? Mom? My heart was pounding so hard, I thought my chest might explode. Lizzie, what is it? Mom asked impatiently. Let's see how much I can do that one. The monster lowered its head over us. Its mouth opened wide, ready to swallow the whole car. And then Luke started to laugh. Wow, cool, he cried. He's Southern. They aren't. The whole family isn't, but Luke is. Don't ask questions. I realized at the same time that the monster wasn't alive. It was a mechanical figure, part of a giant billboard display. I was right, and so I'm gonna drink. So apparently uh, Lizzie's parents were so busy arguing about the map, they hadn't even noticed this giant billboard, which feels insane to me because just a second ago, Dad was like, there aren't even any trees out here. So you'd think that a structure like that, the first anything they've seen in any amount of time would have caught their eyes but apparently dad's not a very observant driver that's been established so i guess i don't know why i'm confused by this i stared up at the red-eyed monster it lowered its head and opened its jaws then the jaws snapped shut and the enormous head slid back up. It looks so real, Clay exclaimed. He's British. You knew he would be. Didn't fool me, I lied. <laughs> I rolled down the window and stuck my head out to read the billboard in front of the mechanical monster. In huge red letters, it said, Welcome to Horror Land, where nightmares come to life. Wow, that sounds like a fun place to go. There was a dark red arrow in the upper left-hand corner with the words, One Mile. Can we go there? Luke demanded eagerly. He leaned forward and grabbed the back of Dad's seat with both hands. Can we, Dad? How about it? It looks kind of scary, Clay said softly. Never heard of it, Dad muttered. I don't think so, Mom said, looking out at the huge billboard. So Gardens is such a wonderful park. Horror land doesn't look very nice. <laughs> she sounds like this now. Let's go, I urged. We're never going to find Zoo Gardens. Mom hesitated, chewing her lower lip. I don't no, she said fretfully. Some of these places aren't safe. Let's give it a try, I urged them. If we hate it, we can leave. That's a pretty good point, actually. Dad rubbed his chin. He sighed. Well, I guess it would be better than sitting here in the middle of nowhere arguing all day. Luke and I reached over Clay to slap each other a high five. Hell yeah! <laughs> Horrorland sounded like a pretty cool place to me. I love scary rides. If the rides are as scary as that monster, I said, pointing at the billboard, this park will be awesome. You don't think it's too scary, do you? Clay asked. No, it won't be too scary, I told him. Oh, wow. Was I wrong? We were driving through what seemed like an endless forest. Just desert into forest, huh? Just slammed into... Okay, whatever. Wait, from... In one mile, it went from hard desert, no trees anywhere, to a forest? Okay. Now that's dumb. RL is just saying things. The road curved sharply, and as we came out of the curve, we saw the tall gates to the park straight up ahead. Behind a tall purple fence, horror land seemed to stretch for miles. Leaning forward in my seat, I could see the tops of rides and strange, colorful buildings. As we drove across the enormous parking lot, Eerie chords of organ music invaded the car. This looks great, Luke exclaimed. Clay and I enthusiastically agreed. I couldn't wait to get out of the car and see everything. Parking lot is nearly empty, Dad said, glancing uneasily at Mom. That means we won't have to wait in long lines, I quickly exclaimed. We crossed the wide parking lot. At the far side of the lot stood a row of purple and green buses with the words Horror Land across the side. As we rode closer, I got a good look at the front gate. The same monster we had seen behind the billboard rose up behind a big purple and green sign over the gate. The sign read, The Horror Land Horrors welcome you to Horror Land. I am going to have to enunciate so carefully when I'm reading this book, huh? Who boy. Dad pulled into a space in an empty aisle to the right of the front gate. Luke and I pushed open the back doors before the car had even stopped. Let's go, I cried. Luke, Clay, and I started trotting toward the gate. As I ran, I stared up at the green monster over the sign. This one didn't move its head like the billboard monster, but... It looked very real. I glanced back and saw that mom and dad were hurrying to catch up with us. This is going to be way cool, I exclaimed. And then I gasped as a deafening explosion made the ground shake. And I stared back in horror as our car burst apart, exploding into a million pieces. Dun, dun, dun. That was the end of chapter two.
their car just exploded behind them like they were in an action movie. What is even happening in this book? They're stranded now. I understand the purpose of exploding the car, but the silliness of exploding the car is wild. They could have had a flat tire, RL. They could have been out of gas. There could have been any number of things that would have stopped them from leaving. And he just blew up the car. All right, chapter three. What's gonna happen next? I don't know, it could be anything. It took me a long while to stop screaming. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> Small chunks of twisted metal and a few burning cinders were all that was left of our car. I, I don't believe it, I stammered. Thank goodness we were all out of the car, mom cried. She gathered us up in a big hug. My car, Dad choked out in a horrified whisper. He began trotting to the gate, shaking his head, muttering to himself. How could the car just blow up like that, dear? Mom asked, hurrying after him. What would make it do that? How should I know? Dad snapped angrily. I hope he dies. Stop yelling at her. You left the map at home and then drove south until your car exploded. I don't get it. I really don't. And now what are we going to do? He sounded really panicked. I didn't blame him. The explosion was really scary. She's right. I'm going to drink again for it. That was fucking wild. Maybe there's a car rental place we can call, Mom suggested. Mom is like me, calm in any emergency. We followed Dad as he went running up to the ticket booth at the entrance. A green monster stood in the booth. He had bulging yellow eyes and dark horns curled over his head. It was a really great costume, yeah, I bet. Welcome to Horrorland, he said in a gruff, low voice. He sounds just like the dad, actually. I've got to give him something else. Um, I'm going to try to do Scottish, even though it's very rusty, and it was never not rusty. So just bear with me. Welcome to Horrorland, he said. A loud stab of organ music rose up from inside the ticket booth. I am a Horrorland horror. All of the horrors and I hope you have a scary day. I'm not doing well with the enunciating already. Um, as this video progresses, I can't imagine it will get better. So I'm just going to say, I'm just going to have it on the record right now. At no point am I saying any word other than horror. H-O-R-R-O-R. -R -R. I can't stress enough that even if it sounds like another word, it's not. It's horror. H-O-R-R-O-R. -R -R. This has been a PSA. My car! Dad cried frantically. There was an explosion. I need a phone! It is actually very funny for the monster. I assume he's actually a real monster, so I'm just going to go with that uh, and call him that. The ticket monster. Uh, to have seen the explosion, but feet away from him and just be like, welcome to horror land. Oh, you know what? That should be his accent. I'm sorry, sir. No phones. The guy in the monster costume replied, that's crazy. I'm going to drink for that because there's no universe. Even a theme park run by monsters would have one phone. What if they need to order a pizza? We need a car. I need to get to a phone. Don't you understand? No phones, the monster repeated. But please, sir, allow us to take care of you. I promise we will take care of everything. Don't let this spoil your visit to Horrorland. Spoil my visit? Dad shrieked, his face growing even redder. My car! The guy's a broken record. Almost as broken as his car. Another loud stab of organ music made me jump. The creepy music made me feel as if I were actually in a horror movie. We will take care of you. I promise, the horror said. Please enjoy your stay. Don't worry about transportation. But, but... Dad sputtered, <laughs> but <laughs> the horror gestured toward the park. Please enter as our guests. Free admission. I apologize for your car. I promise you have no need to worry about your car. Don't go in there. I'm drinking. Dad turned back to us, sweat dripping down his forehead. I could see he was really upset. Yeah, I wonder why. I can't enjoy an amusement park now, he said, being reasonable for like the first time this whole book. We've had such a long drive, Mom told Dad. Let's go in for a short while. Let them blow off some steam. Dad thought about it, frowning hard. Okay, just for a little while, he agreed finally. So dumb, drinking again. The organ music grew louder as we stepped through the gate. Wow, look at this place, I cried. It really is like being in a horror movie. We were standing on a brown cobbled street. Strange dark cottages tilted up on both sides of the street. 
Tall trees along the street nearly blocked out all the sunlight. The air carried a chill. Low howls, like wolf howls, floated out from the cottages. Cool, Luke declared. A sign proclaimed, Welcome to Werewolf Village. Do not feed the werewolves if you can help it. Cool, Luke proclaimed again. It seemed to be his word of the day. I wonder at what point that will change. Well, they certainly keep this park clean, Mom said, trying to sound cheerful. There isn't a piece of trash or dirt anywhere. Of course, it isn't very crowded. Dad lingered behind. I've got to find a phone, he said fretfully. I can't enjoy this until I know we have a way to get home. But dear, Mom started. No, he's right. There's got to be a phone somewhere, Dad interrupted. Go on without me. No, I'll come with you, Mom said. You're in such a frantic state. You'll need me to make the calls for you. The kids will have a better time without us hanging around anyway. Oh, thank God, they're splitting up. The best thing to do in any kind of horror media. But it is Goosebumps, so the kids have to be on their own. If there are adults there, that means the adults might be useful. And God forbid that happens. With those words, Mom and Dad rushed off to find a phone. Meet back here, Mom called to us. At a specific time? Like when? You don't have cell phones. At what time do you want? Uh, okay. I turned to watch Mom and Dad hurry away. The 90s seemed so difficult. I turned back in time to see a gray wolf edging out from behind the cottage. It lowered its head and let out a rumbling, warning growl. All three of us froze as we realized its hungry red eyes were locked on us. Dun, dun, dun. This is off to a rollicking start. Car blow up. Werewolves right on Main Street, USA. What next? Can't wait to see what Adventureland looks like. Chapter 4. I cried out and pulled Luke and Clay back. The wolf slithered out, holding its head low, glaring up at us with wide red eyes, its mouth open hungrily. It's real, Clay declared, swallowing hard. I had my hand on his shoulder. I could feel him trembling. The wolf let out a deep growl. Then it slid back behind the cottage wall. I think it's some kind of robot or something, I told Clay. Let's go somewhere else, Clay replied, suddenly very pale. Good instincts, kid. You'll make it far in this town. What does that sign up there say? Luke asked. He went running over the dark cobblestones to the sign, and Clay and I followed. The sign read, No pinching. Oh, Luke's in trouble. Luke laughed. That's stupid. I saw a green horror watching us from down the street. Then I saw a family making its way behind the row of cottages. There was a mother, a father, and a little girl. The little girl was crying for some reason. The parents had their hands on her shoulders and looked very upset. A wolf howl cut through the air. Let's find some rides, Clay suggested. Walking side by side, keeping close together, we made our way out of the werewolf village. The street widened into a round plaza. Bright sunlight returned as soon as we stepped out of the village. Several purple and green buildings surrounded the plaza. I saw a few more families and several green costumed horrors keeping an eye on everything. A pudgy horror behind a purple and green cart was selling ice cream cones. Black ice cream! Yuck! Luke declared, making a face. I hate black ice cream. It's full of activated charcoal, which sucks your medicine out of you, just in case you were wondering. I hate activated charcoal stuff. It's for Instagram photos. Don't eat it if you're on any medicine. Okay, this has been... My second PSA of the video. I'm done, I promise. We hurried past the cart, past another no-pinching sign, and stopped in front of what appeared to be a tall purple mountain. It's a ride, I told them. Doom slide. Will you be the one to slide forever? <laughs> I hope so. Cool, Luke cried. Slapping Clay a high five, yeah! <laughs> I'll bet you climb to the top and then slide all the way down, I said, pointing the top of the mountain-shaped building. Yeah, that's how slides work, buddy. We ran to the building. It was dark and cold inside. A wide ramp curved up toward the top. I could hear kids squealing and laughing, but I couldn't see them. The three of us half walked, half ran up the ramp, eager to get to the top. About halfway up, we stopped to read another sign. Warning, you may be the one to slide to your doom. Now I could hear kids screaming as they slid down, but it was too dark to see anything. Are you scared, Clay? I asked, noticing his tight expression. No way, he insisted, embarrassed by my question. I've seen these things before. They're like really huge sliding boards. You just sit on them and slide down. Hurry, Luke shouted, running ahead of us. Hey, wait up, I called. I followed them to the top of the ramp. We found ourselves on a wide platform. A row of long, curving, sliding boards stretched to the end of the platform. The sliding boards were numbered from one to ten. In the dim light, I saw two horrors watching us approach. 
When they stood in front of the sliding boards, their bulging yellow eyes lit up as we hurried over to them. Do you slide all the way down? Luke asked one of them. Yeah, it's a slide. Do you go really fast? Clay asked, lingering a few feet behind us. The horror nodded again. It's a long way down, he rumbled. He sounds just like dead. It's a long way down. No. Hey, it's a long way down, he rumbled. <laughs> sure. Be careful which slide you pick, the other horror warned. Don't I pick the doom slide? He gestured to the number painted in black in front of each slide. Yeah, don't pick the doom slide, his partner repeated. You'll slide down forever and ever. I laughed. He was just trying to scare us, wasn't he? Dun, dun, dun. I'm gonna drink twice. Once for the cliffhanger and once for both of those accents. Everyone needs to sound like something. That's how voices work. Chapter five. I chose slide number three because three is my lucky number. Luke sat down on top of the slide next to mine, slide number two. And Clay scrambled over to the far end and dropped down onto slide number 10. Why would he do it so far away? That doesn't even make sense. He's afraid, so wouldn't he want to be closer to his friends? Whatever. I glanced back to see what the horrors were doing, but before I could focus on them, I felt the bottom tilt underneath me. I let out a long, high-pitched shriek as I began to slide. The slide curved and curved, and I swirled down in the darkness, faster and faster. The slide curved up, then around, then down again. I'm a human roller coaster, I thought happily. I glanced from one side to the other, trying to see Luke and Clay, but it was too dark and I was moving too fast. And then, bump, a chute opened up. I hit the ground hard, landing on the seat of my jeans outside. Bump. Luke bounced out beside me. He hit the ground, still lying on his back, and made no attempt to get up. He grinned up at me. Where am I? Back on the ground, I told him, climbing to my feet. I brushed off the back of my jeans, then reached behind my head to straighten my braid. Let's go again, Luke said, still lying there. Wow, I'm a little dizzy. How fast do you think we were going? I shrugged. Pretty fast, I think. It's so dark in there, it's hard to know how fast you're going. Then I realized we were missing a member of our sliding party. I stared at the... Cl how did it take that long? I stared at the closed chutes on the wall of the building. Hey, where's Clay? Huh? Luke had forgotten about him too. Bummer for Clay, man. Somewhere, wherever Clay is, he felt that. We both stared at the side of the building, waiting for Clay to pop out. Where is he? Luke demanded shrilly. He couldn't be that much slower than us, could he? I shook my head. I'm starting to feel really nervous. Maybe he came out the front, I said. Maybe slide number 10 dumps you out in the front? As we ran around the building toward the front, I scolded myself for getting scared so easily. Of course Clay came out in a different chute. He was probably waiting for us in front of the building. He was probably worried about us. As we rounded the purple building, the wide circular plaza came into view. No sign of Clay, though. He isn't here, Luke cried, struggling to catch his breath. I was breathing hard, too, and the heavy feeling of dread in my stomach grew even heavier. No, no Clay, I muttered. What are we gonna do? Luke asked. His blue eyes were wide with fear. I saw a green horror woman standing just inside the entrance. Hey, I called out as I ran over to her. Did you see a kid come out of there? No, this is the entrance. No one comes out here, she replied. He wears glasses, I told her. He's wearing a blue t-shirt, denim shorts. The horror shook her head. No, no one comes out this way. Did you check the back? Everyone comes out the back. He didn't come out the back, I told the horror, and he didn't come out the front, so what happened to him? The horror was silent for a long moment. Then she said, in a low voice, just above a whisper, Maybe your friend chose the doom slide. Dun dun dun! Yeah, of course he did. Why would he pick ten? That doesn't even make sense. Like, it wouldn't, it doesn't make sense for him to have picked ten, but like, whatever, you know? Pour one out for Clay, I guess. We're only on chapter six and he's already died. I stared at the woman in the horror costume. You're joking, right? I stammered. She stared back with her bulging yellow eyes and didn't reply. The signs give a warning, she said. There's always a warning. That's so creepy. I actually really like that. I'm gonna drink. She turned and disappeared into the dark entrance. Luke and I goggled at each other. We've got to find Mom and Dad, Luke muttered. We've got to find Clay first, I told him. If Mom and Dad find out we lost Clay, they'll get angry and make us go home as soon as we find him. The sun was high in the sky now. Clay, where are you? I asked, thinking out loud. He's sliding forever, Luke said, shaking his head. Sliding forever and ever on the doom slide. Come on, I said, tugging the sleeve on his t-shirt. I started pulling him to the dark entrance. Huh? Where? Luke pulled back. We'll go on the slides again. Without Clay? We can't go on it again without Clay. 
We're going to find Clay, I said, grabbing his arm this time and pulling him to the dark open doorway. You mean? My brother was starting to catch on. I nodded. Yes, we'll follow him. We'll take the same slide he took. Slot number ten, Luke murmured. And then he added in a solemn whisper, the doom slide. Dun that feels like a dun dun dun, even though it's not at the end of the chapter, so I'm going to drink. We'll take it, and it will lead us right to him, I said. We climbed the ramp in silence. The rapid thud of our sneakers echoed in the vast hollow mountain. The two horrors were still standing at the top of the slides. Be careful which slide you pick, one of them warned. We know which one we want, I said, breathlessly. Slide number ten, both of us, together. I glanced at Luke, who stood right behind me, his features tight with fear. Maybe we shouldn't, he whispered. Why not? I demanded impatiently. What if the warning is true? Luke demanded. Don't be dumb, I scolded him. This is an amusement park, remember? They don't kill kids or send them sliding to their doom. It's all for fun. Luke swallowed hard. You sure? Of course I'm sure, I replied. Now do you want to find Clay or not? Luke nodded. Then let's go, I ordered. I sat down at the top of slide number 10. Luke plopped down right behind me, stretching his legs outside of mine. I felt the floor tilt up beneath us. We started to slide. Clay, here we come, I cried. Dun, dun, dun. It wasn't really a dun, dun, dun. It was pretty triumphant, so I'm gonna... Feels like, like, bold and brave, so I'm not gonna drink for that one, actually. It didn't feel like a dun, dun, dun. Chapter 7. I didn't scream this time. I clasped my hands in my lap and gritted my teeth. There was no way I was going to enjoy this ride. I just wanted to get to the end of it. I wanted to solve the mystery and find Clay. As we slid down together, Luke grabbed onto me, his hands gripping my waist. He cried out when we slid over a big bump, and it felt as if we were going to go flying off the slide. We were sliding faster and faster in total darkness. I tried to see if we were moving alongside the other slides, but it was so dark I couldn't even see my sneakers in front of me. I gritted my teeth harder and tried to brace myself to go flying out the chute and bumping onto the ground. But no chute opened. The ride didn't end. We began to slide faster. The slide dipped and curved, sending us down into the thick, heavy blackness. We're going to slide forever. The warning sign didn't lie. Luke and I both cried out in disgust as something sticky covered our faces. Ew. Yuck, Luke screamed. What is that? My face. It's like cobwebs, I shouted back at him, like sticky cobwebs. The <laughs> sticky threads covered my face like a net. No, that's so scary. I'm finishing my drink. And then a flare of bright light made me shut my eyes. Was it daylight? Were we heading outside? No. I forced my eyes open and squinted at the yellow light, and I realized I was staring at blazing flames. The slide ahead of us was on fire! <laughs> oh no! The yellow and orange flames raged up, topped by a curtain of billowing black smoke. I raised my hands to my face and started to shriek. We were sliding right into the blazing flames. We're gonna burn up, Luke screamed. Help! Somebody help us! Dun dun dun! <laughs> Oh my god, this is very high stakes. I assume they won't burn up because um, it's only chapter 8, but like, they could. I shut my eyes and felt a powerful burst of heat, almost like an explosion. I'm burning up, I thought. A whoosh of cold air made me open my eyes. The fire was behind us now. We had sailed right through it. The fire was fake, I realized. Some kind of projection or something. A chute opened in front of us. Oh my god. Daylight streamed in. Bump. I landed hard on soft grass. A second later, Luke dropped out behind me. They should have come out at the same time. They were on the same slide. That's not how stuff works, RL. When you're at the front of a plane, you don't arrive at an airport before the people at the back of the plane. You arrive there at the same time because you're on the same plane. I blinked several times, waiting for my eyes to adjust to the bright sunlight. Then I climbed slowly to my feet. A yellow and green sign on a wooden pole stood directly in front of us. It read, Welcome to Doom. Population? Zero humans. Standing next to the sign was Clay. Hey! He came rushing over to greet us, a happy smile on his round pink face. He slapped Luke a high five. Three in one book? Are you serious, Aro? <laughs> Are you kidding? Where have we been? I asked. Where have you been? Right here, Clay replied. I didn't know where I was. I think this is the other side of the park or something, so I just waited for you. You picked the good slide, Luke told Clay. Wow, it was excellent. I was kind of scared, Clay confessed. I mean the fire. Great special effects, my brother exclaimed. This park is awesome. I turned and gazed around. We were definitely in another section of Horrorland. 
Nothing looked familiar. Across the wide walkway, I saw several kids in bathing suits headed down a sandy path. A sign over the path read, Horror Rapids. They brought bathing suits? Is this the water park edition? Is this their Typhoon Lagoon? Typhoon Ladoom. What? Okay, I'm drinking for that. To our right, a square-shaped building made of glass reflected the bright sunlight. The glass walls shimmered brightly, as if on fire. Squinting into the light, I could just barely make out the sign in front of it. House of Mirrors. Wow, that won't be scary at all. Let's try the House of Mirrors, Luke urged, pulling Clay by the arm. Whoa, wait a minute, I cried. Don't you think we should try to find Mom and Dad? They're way over on the other side of the park, Luke replied, tugging Clay along with him across the pavement. Come on, Lizzie, it looks like fun. I hesitated, thinking about Mom and Dad. I stared into the white glare of the glass building. Suddenly, I felt someone tap my shoulder. Startled, I cried out and spun around. It was a green-costumed horror. His bulging eyes stared into mine as he leaned close to me. Get away while you still can, he whispered. He's French. He turned his eyes quickly from side to side as if making sure no one was watching him. Please, I'm serious. Get away while you still can. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Chapter 9. I was so stunned, I didn't say anything. I watched him run off, moving awkwardly in the bulky horror costume, his purple tail dragging over the pavement behind him. Luke laughed. These horror guys are great, he declared. They really try to scare you in this place. I watched the horror disappear quickly behind a tall, blue, pyramid-shaped building. Maybe he was really warning us, Clay murmured, staring at me. No way, Luke declared. Stop looking so gloomy all the time. This is a great place. You like to be scared, don't you? I started to tell Clay I was sure it was just a joke, but Luke interrupted. Hurry up. Let's check out the House of Mirrors. Let's have some fun before Mom and Dad show up and make us leave. He dragged Clay toward the entrance, and I followed. We passed another no-pinching sign as we made our way to the shimmering glass building. Outside the entrance, I stopped to read the yellow and green sign. It read... House of Mirrors, reflect before you enter. No one may ever see you again. Hey, wait up, I called to the boys. They had already hurried inside. Don't abandon someone in a hall of mirrors. Even a regular one, you shouldn't do that. That's fucked up. I stepped in and found myself in a narrow, dark tunnel. Luke, Clay, wait up, I shouted. The tunnel ended and I found myself in a narrow hallway with mirrored walls and a mirrored ceiling. I could see my reflections, dozens of them. Then I called again to the boys. Where are you? Wait up. Try and find us, Luke called. I made my way quickly through the mirrored walkway. The walls curved to the right, then the left. My reflections followed me, stretching deep into the mirrors, dozens and dozens of me getting smaller and smaller, stretching to infinity. She's like moving on through the hall of mirrors, and then like something predictable happens. Bonk, she hits her forehead on solid glass. Obviously, hollow mirrors. She's like pain jolted across my forehead, then down the back of my neck, all the way to my spine. I raised my hands to the glass and waited for my dizziness to fade away. Girl, do you have a concussion? Are you okay? I'm worried for her, so I'm gonna drink on her behalf. She can't. She's not of age. Lizzie, where are you? Try to find us, I heard Luke call. Their voices seem to be behind me now. I turned back, but there were only mirrors behind me, no opening. I started walking again, more carefully this time. I kept both hands out in front of me so I wouldn't bump into anything again. I turned a corner and stepped into a different room. To my surprise, the floor in this room was a mirror. The walls, the ceiling, the floor were all mirrors. I took a few careful steps. Hey guys, where are you? I called. No reply. I felt a sharp stab of fear in my stomach. That is scary. I'm gonna drink. Luke? Clay? Are you there? I saw the mouths of my reflections move as I called out, Luke? Clay? Silence. Don't fool around, guys, I shouted. Where are you? Silence. No reply. Where have they gone? Dun, dun, dun. Well, it's chapter 10, but we've already died. Guess that's the book. Pretty crazy how short this one was. <laughs> It's just blank pages for the rest of it. So at this point, she's like, Horrorland's too scary. I actually don't like it. <laughs> like, yeah, two stars on Yelp, my dude. Luke? Clay? I called to them in a trembling voice, turning all around, searching for an exit. Then I heard a muffled giggle. They had been playing a little joke on me. Hey, you're not funny, I screamed angrily. Really not funny. I could hear them both burst out laughing. Come and find us, Lizzie, Luke called. What's taking you so long? Clay added. More giggling. It seemed to come from just up ahead. 
So she makes her way through the Hall of Mirrors. She's, like, feeling it, going around corners, etc. Calling for them. The light's growing dim. Reflections are darkening. The shadows are growing longer. And it's like, uh uh-oh, stuff's going bad, actually, now. And she's like, I'm going as fast as I can. Just don't move, okay? Stay in one place. And then Luke and Clay are both like, wait, we are... How are we going to get out of here? So she bumps her head again, which is not great. She definitely is going to suffer some permanent damage at this point. She's trying to find them. They're just, they just keep shouting really unhelpful stuff at her. Like, it's boring waiting for you. Come on. We're right here. Blah, blah, blah. I turned a corner and stepped into a wider room. No mirrors here. The walls were all glass. I stopped to gaze around and there was Luke. Finally, he cried. Why couldn't you find us? I kept hitting my head. I told him, let's get out of here. Where's Clay? (laughs) Again? (laughs) Luke's mouth dropped open in surprise. He spun around, searching for his friend. He was standing right here, he said. Luke, I'm in no mood for any more dumb jokes, I said. Clay, where are you hiding? I'm not hiding, I'm over here, Clay called. I took a few steps closer to my brother and Clay came into view. He was standing in deep shadows behind a glass wall, his hands pressed against the pane. How do you get over there? Luke asked. Clay shrugged. I moved toward my brother, then stopped. I suddenly realized that he was behind a wall of glass. Luke and I were in different rooms. That's, oh no, that's worrying actually. I'm gonna drink again. I walked up to the glass wall and tapped on it with my fist. Huh? Luke's face filled with surprise. He made his way over to me. How'd that get there? He murmured. Ooh. Stand right there, I told Luke. I'll find a way into your room. I moved slowly around the room, keeping a hand pressed against the glass. Before I realized it, I'd made a complete circle. I was back where I'd started, and there was no opening. No doorway. No way out. This isn't much fun, I said glumly. Yeah. Luke and Clay nodded. I could see they were both really frightened. Uttering a worried sigh, I leaned against the wall that separated Luke and me. And as I leaned, the wall started to move. I jumped back with a sharp cry. The wall was sliding toward me, closing in on me. Oh no, that's not the way you want it to go, buddy. Glancing around frantically, I saw that all the walls were sliding in. Luke, I cried. I turned to see him backing up too. The box was closing in, growing smaller, smaller. We're going to be crushed, I cried. Dun, dun, dun. This book is crazy. It goes everywhere. Chapter 11. Not even halfway through. I backed up. My hands raised like a shield. Closer, closer. The glass walls moved slowly, silently. This is so scary. This is a fucking nightmare. (laughs) Everyone's screaming about how the glass is squeezing them. This is not new information. I'm going to skip it. This chapter is only a page and a half. Um, It's just them shouting about how they're going to get crushed and how the glass panes are moving in, etc., etc., etc. I gasped for air. I tried to push with all my might against the glass, but it was no use. I was being crushed into a human square. They called me human square in high school. Anyway, dun dun dun. (laughs) This is going great. Chapter 12. I couldn't hear Luke or Clay anymore. I could only hear my gasping, choked breath. I shut my eyes and felt the floor drop away. And before I realized what was happening, I was falling. Falling rapidly down. I opened my eyes in time to see the glass walls roll above me as I slid down, down, down through an open chute. And in a few seconds, I was back outside. I landed, sitting up on the grass with a gentle thud. Luke and Clay came sliding out beside me. Every uh, attraction in this whole theme park ends with you falling on your ass into a field, just like Disneyland. For a long moment, we sat on the grass, blinking in the bright sunlight, staring at each other in disbelief. Luke let out a laugh, a gleeful laugh. He stood up and began jumping up and down for joy. I didn't exactly feel like jumping up and down. Luke reached down, grabbed both of my hands, and pulled me to my feet. What should we do next? He demanded, grinning. Next? I cried. Are you for real? That was really scary, Clay said. I thought we were going to be scrunched flat. It was awesome, Luke declared. Once again, he was forgetting that a few seconds before, he'd been screaming in total panic. Men, am I right? It was way too scary, Clay murmured, shaking his head. Clay's right, I agreed. It was too scary to be fun. Don't you see? That's the whole idea, Luke cried. That's how they scare you here. It's so awesome. They make you think that one more second and you're a goner, but it's all perfectly timed. They want you to be terrified and then poof, you're okay. I rolled my eyes. Yeah, sure. I turned to see one of the guys in a green horror costume walking by, carrying a huge bouquet of black balloons. Luke hurried up beside the horror. Hey, has anyone ever died here in the park? Luke asked. 
The horror kept walking. The black balloons bobbed above his head. Only once, he told Luke. One person died here? The horror shook his big green head. No, not what I meant. A person can only die once here, the horror said. No one has ever died twice. Dun, dun, dun! Chapter 13. The Spookiest Chapter. Do you mean people have really died here? I shouted. But the horror walked quickly on, the black balloons bouncing against each other, floating darkly against the clear blue sky. He was joking, right? Clay asked in a trembling voice. Yeah, I guess, I replied. A family walked past us, heading toward the House of Mirrors. They have two little boys with them, both about five or six, and both of them were crying. I have seen so many crying kids in this park, I commented. They are just wimps, Luke replied. Scaredy cats. Let's go find another ride or something. No, I really think we should find Mom and Dad, I told him. Yeah, let's go find them, Clay said eagerly. Oh, what's the hurry, Luke protested. Let them find us. They're probably really worried, I insisted. I started walking toward the front gate. Dad'll only make us leave, Luke grumbled, but he followed anyway, and Clay gratefully came along, keeping close to my side. The trail curved under thick trees, and we were suddenly in the shade. A sign read, Beware of tree snakes. God. This place is a... This, I was going to say this place is a nightmare, but like, yeah, obviously. So like sprinting down the path, the trees are hissing. It's very scary. I'm going to drink. They run all the way out and they make it out of the forest, but they're so scared that they just keep running anyway, which I think is a valid response to tree snakes. And so they keep running and they don't see any other people on the trail, not even like horrors. And they slow down as they come to another sign. It was an arrow pointing in the direction they were running and it reads, front exit, don't bother, you will never escape. Scary. I'm gonna drink. It's a frightening book full of frights. Clay's obviously freaked out and Lizzie's trying to comfort him. She's like, it's only a joke. The signs are supposed to be funny. He's like, yeah, <laughs> funny. But then we continued on our way. The path goes past a bunch of black flowers, which Lizzie is really startled by. And I'm like, this is the least scary thing you've encountered. And then the path suddenly comes to a stop in front of a large red barn. The boys walked up to the open doorway of the barn. I stayed back, searching for a path that led around the barn. I couldn't see one. The path goes right through the barn to the other side, Luke called to me. Come on, Lizzie. He motioned for me to join them. I spotted a small sign painted to the right of the barn's double doors. It read, Bat Barn. Hey, are there bats in there? I called. Yeah, girl, probably. I walk up to a store that says t-shirt store. I'm like, are there t-shirts in here? Same vibe, baby. I like most animals, but bats really give me the creeps. Luke stepped inside the barn. Clay hung back, standing just outside the door. Come on, Lizzie, Luke called. The path goes right out the other side. Don't be chicken. You can run straight through. I stepped up beside Clay at the doorway and peered inside the barn. It looks okay, Clay said quietly. The sour odor was much stronger. Yuck, I said, making a face. It really stinks. Luke stood inside the barn, his eyes raised to the rafters. I don't see anything up there, he reported. Doors on the opposite wall were wide open. Let's go, I told Clay. He and I stepped into the barn. The sour smell was overpowering. We started running to the doors on the opposite wall, and they slammed shut. Ah, uh, that's, um, I don't like it. What's going on? Clay cried in a whisper. We were in total darkness, blacker than black. The sour odor swept over me. I started to feel sick. And then I heard the rapid flutter of wings. Soft at first, then louder. Closer. Maybe they're birds! What are bats, if not just spooky birds? I screamed as I felt something brush against the back of my neck. They are gonna have to get rabies shots after this. Like, statistically, so many bats have rabies. Dun dun dun! There's nothing scarier than rabies. Chapter 14. Bats! <laughs> Clay cried. I felt him grab my arm. I can't see, Luke shouted. It's so dark. I hate bats, I stammered. I felt a cold whoosh of air as a bat flapped over my head. The flapping, fluttering sounds were all around us. So, like, her eyes slowly adjust to the darkness, and she starts noticing there's, like, a ton of bats, obviously. And they're, like, circling them, and they're zooming around them, and they're bumping into their shoulders and their heads. And then they, like, start pulling Lizzie's hair, and they get caught in her hair. Which is crazy, because she has her hair in a braid, so, like, it would actually be quite difficult for that to happen. And there was no one around to help. Dun, dun, dun. Anyway, chapter 15 starts where chapter 14 left off. 
they're surrounded by bats and they're very upset about it. And then, like, one of them just tries to open the door and it opens. (laughs) So they go outside. I hate bats. I really do, I exclaimed with a shudder. But there weren't any bats, Luke said, grinning at me. It was all a fake. Clay was like, Clay's like very mad. He's like, yes, there were bats. So what are you talking about? And Luke's like, it was special effects. Whatever. Stop freaking out. We don't need rabies shots. Yes, you do. Clay's like, I just want to stop talking about the bats and find your parents. Please. I hate this stupid park. Two people in horror costumes appeared on the path, going the other way, chatting enthusiastically. That's nice. They're having a good day together. Is this the way to the front gate? I called to them. They ignored my question and walked right past us. Hey, I called to them, but they both kept jabbering away and didn't even seem to hear me. They're on break, dude. Leave them alone. The sun beamed down on us. The air had become hot and still, with no breeze at all. I saw four teenagers in bathing suits, two boys and two girls, hurrying over the grass toward a large brown pond. Gross. A sign came into view near the shore. It read, Alligator Pond. Feel free to swim here. (laughs) Honestly, truly loving the signage. Luke laughed. Are those guys crazy? You a second ago said the bats were pretend. I shrugged. We continued along the path. A few minutes later, I recognized the mountain-shaped structure of the doom slide. Hey! The wide circular plaza came into view. We're back in Main Street, USA, baby! Where do you suppose mom and dad are? I asked. They've probably been looking for us for hours, and now they're really mad, Luke said, frowning. Where are they? Clay cried. He's starting to sound really stressed out. Can't imagine why, girl. Come on, let's go, Luke urged. I hope we find them soon. I'm getting really hungry. We wandered through the park for what seemed like hours. We searched through dark, mysterious woods and strange monster villages. We passed through a carnival area with dozens of scary-looking rides. On the other side of Vampire Village, we passed a building marked Monster Zoo. Okay, the vampires get a village, the werewolves get a village... And then some monsters are in a zoo? Where is the line drawn? What are the implications of that? I can't dwell on this. I have to keep going. But I'm gonna drink. Horrorland was surprisingly empty. We passed several horrors scurrying along the paths in their bright green costumes, and we saw a few families wandering around, always with crying kids. The rides at the carnival area were all running empty. All the food stands and restaurants were empty, too. We walked clear across to the other side of the park. I was feeling more and more worried. Why hadn't we run into mom and dad? By the time we found ourselves back at the alligator pond, I was feeling pretty bad. I crossed the grassy shore and walked up to the edge of the brown water. What do you think happened to those teenagers who went swimming here? Luke asked, staring across the pond. Think the alligators ate them? Maybe, I replied. (laughs) She's like, whatever. Hey, look! Clay cried, pointing to the water. I saw two long, greenish-brown logs. They're alligators! floating toward us on top of the water. It took me a while to realize that the logs were alligators. (laughs) Better step back, I warned them. All three of us were standing at the water's edge. The alligators floated silently, just below the surface of the still water, hardly creating a ripple. I have such a bad feeling about this park, I told them. A real bad feeling. And as I said that, I felt strong hands grab me from behind and push me into the alligator pond. Dun, dun, dun! He's just been screaming outside the door for like an hour. (laughs) Anyway, that's Goose. For those of you who don't know him, he's Goose. He's the best. Oh yeah, we left at a really scary place when Goose was like, I want to come into the room right now. Okay. Chapter 17. I screamed. Then I realized I wasn't being tossed into the water. The hands were holding onto my shoulders. That's two different things. I spun around. Dad! I cried. Hooray! Leslie! He exclaimed, still holding on to me. Where have you guys been? We've searched this entire park 12 times, Mom declared. This is why when you say you're going to meet at a meeting place, you go there and you just sit there. That's how it works. We were looking for you, I cried. We all started talking at once. I was so happy to see them, and I could see that Luke and Clay were really happy too. I want to go home, I said. Did you find a phone? Clay asked. Did you find a car? Dad shook his head. No, no phones. The guy in the monster costume didn't lie. There are no phones in the park. But the horrors were very nice to us, Mom broke in. They told us not to worry about a thing. They said to just come to the ticket booth when we were ready to leave, Dad reported. I'm really hungry, Luke said. The restaurants and food stands are all on the other side of the park. Well, that's inconvenient. 
Mom, Mom said. Can we just eat lunch and then leave? I asked eagerly. Lizzie, just leave. I know you're hungry, but girl, how long have you been here? Like, I would not stay another second. I still had a bad feeling about the place. I wanted to get away from Horrorland. Far away. Your mom and I have spent all our time searching for you, Dad said, wiping sweat off his sunburned forehead with one hand. We should all at least go on one ride together before we leave, Mom said. What? Okay, that's so dumb. I'm drinking. Maybe there's a ride that will take us to the front of the park, Dad suggested. What, like the, like a train? Like a monorail? A Horrorland monorail. Imagine. If you can dream it, you can do it. That's all I'm saying. We could all take it, then have some lunch and leave. That sounds good, Mom said. We headed away from the alligator pond, across the grassy shore to the paved walkway. May maybe we could find something that's just a little scary, Clay suggested. Dad laughed. Are you having a good time, Clay? Clay hesitated. A, a little, he replied finally. The path curved along a narrow brown river. Gross. A small brown boathouse came into view. Behind it, I could see slender canoes bobbing beneath a wooden dock. Don't fall for this. Even the real Tom Sawyer's island is not fun. A sign beside the boathouse read, Coffin Cruise, a relaxing float to the grave. Well, I guess I know what they're gonna do. I think the river flows toward the front of the park, Dad said. Let's take it. Luke cheered and went running to the dock. I lingered behind the others. When I finally stepped out onto the dock, it took me a while to realize that the objects bobbing in the brown water weren't canoes. They were coffins. That's spooky. Um, it feels like a dun-dun-dun moment, even though it's not the end of the chapter. They were made of black, polished wood. The lids were pulled back, revealing red satin interiors. Each coffin was big enough for one person. Well, that's coffins, baby. We're really going to climb into coffins, I asked. They look comfy, Mom said. She's so tired. I super empathize. Me first, Luke cried, running to the end of the wooden dock. Two costume horrors appeared to help us into the coffins. Lay back. Enjoy the ride. One of them said, It will be your last, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, the other horror added, with a low chuckle, so, you know, I guessed right. When we were all inside coffins, the horrors untied them and gave us a hard push away from the duck. The coffin floated gently, bobbing in the water. Trees shimmered on both banks as I floated past. It was so pretty, so relaxing. Honestly, it does sound nice. Why did I think something terrible was about to happen? Dun, dun, dun. Because obviously something terrible was about to happen. Lizzie. Chapter 18. Lying on my back, I couldn't see the others over the coffin sides, but I could hear the splash of their coffins around mine. This is nice, Mom said. Very relaxing. How can they... She, how can... Lizzie hear her. Like, I just feel like logistically they really wouldn't be able to hear each other unless mom was super using her chest voice, you know? It's boring, Luke declared from up ahead of me. She definitely can't hear both of them. There's just no way. That's not how it works, RL. I'm drinking. I could float like this for hours, mom said. She's so tired. I settled back on the coffin bottom, my hands resting at my sides, and stared up dreamily at the bird circling high in the clear sky. The coffin bobbed gently, making soft splashing sounds. So pleasant. So quiet. And then, before I could utter a sound, the coffin lid slammed shut over me and I was trapped in total darkness. Dun dun dun! Chapter 19 Hey, I shouted. I pushed against the lid with both hands. She keeps trying. It doesn't work. She's freaking out. It's like, you know, typical stuff you would do in this insane situation. And like the major problem isn't just like, it's not a claustrophobia thing. It's warm in the coffin. Like it's hot. It pretty much is just pages and pages of her just trying to calm her shit down, trying to figure out how to open the coffin. Coffin won't open. She's very hot. She's sweating. Something's clearly gone wrong. She's like, the lid should open, but it won't open. I lowered my hands in defeat. I sucked in a mouthful of the hot, stale air. My chest was heaving. My body trembled. And then I felt my legs start to itch. It's already a nightmare. Why does it always have to be bugs? A tingly feeling down near my ankles, moving up my legs, an itchy, crawly feeling. Why does it always have to be bugs? Sometimes things can be scary without there also being bugs. Damn it. I let out a low, terrified groan. Dun, dun, dun. I don't have a problem with bugs, as long as they're not in my house. Or on my legs. I think RL is afraid of bugs. I think that's what it is. Because it's always bugs with him. It's always bugs with him. Chapter 20. 
I'm now going to read the stupidest sentence I've ever seen in my goddamn life. I tried to scratch my legs, but my arms weren't long enough. She's saying, like, the coffin's so cramped she can't move, but, like, no, you're a 12-year-old girl. There's literally no way you don't have enough wiggle room to scratch your legs. There's just no way. Stop it. RL, you can't just say stuff. The tingling moved higher. I wanted to scream, but I started to cough. And then the coffin lid, <laughs> cough, coffin, <laughs> popped open. Anyway, the lid popped open is what I mean. So she sits up, scratches her leg. Apparently there are no spiders or bugs of any kind. It's just like that thing in the, like, Bugs Land show, the ill-fated Bugs Land show, where they made it feel like bugs were crawling all over you, and for some reason people didn't like that. The coffin pulled up to a small dock. I braced both hands against the sides of the coffin and heaved myself to my feet. That was horrible, my mom shrieked. That really went too far. Dad said angrily, I'm going to complain. We all scrambled onto the dock. Dad ran off the dock toward the open plaza, and the rest of us hurried after him. To the ticket booth, he called back at us. Right up here, he pointed. They just go too far, Mom said breathlessly, jogging to keep up with us as we followed Dad. It isn't any fun when a ride is that scary. I really had trouble breathing. So did I, I told her. Hey, how do we get home? Luke suddenly demanded, staring at Mom. Our car blew up. Good point. Did we ever figure that one out? Like, what were Mom and Dad up to this whole time? I think those people in the monster costumes will lend us a car, Mom replied. A wild assumption to make. They told your father to just come to the ticket booth. Can we stop and get pizza? Luke asked. Let's get out of this place and then worry about lunch, Mom told him. Yes, Mom. Good. She's so good. Mom, this mom has got her shit together. If she were with them that whole time, none of this would have happened. None of it. The main plaza was totally empty. Not another living person. We followed dad to the first ticket booth. He turned back to us, making a disappointed face. Closed, he said. That's inconvenient. A metal grate had been pulled over the window. Have you tried the next window? Like, usually they make it very clear which windows are open. So, like, did you try the next window? So, he goes to the next one, it's closed. They go to the next one, it's closed. And all the ticket booths are closed. Don't they expect any more visitors today? Mom asked Dad. How can they just close like that? Dad shrugged. We'll have to ask someone. His eyes searched the empty grounds. So they start walking toward a low green building that's just beyond the ticket booths. Like, it looks like an office. Uh, but that's closed too and locked. Dad's like, what's going on here? Where'd everyone disappear to? And mom's like, it's very strange. You're right, mom. It is. Maybe we can find someone in the parking lot, I suggested. Like, like a parking attendant or something. They'll be able to tell us how to get a car to go home. Good idea, Lizzie, Dad said. Come on, I said. I turned and ran past the empty ticket booths. The tall metal front gate to Horrorland stood just beyond the booths. I stopped for a second to read a sign on the side of one of the ticket booths. It said, no exit. No one leaves Horrorland alive. Ha, ah, I said sarcastically. These signs are a riot, aren't they? I jogged the rest of the way and reached the gate first. I pulled it and it wouldn't open, so I tried pushing it. It didn't move. Then I saw the heavy chain and the large steel padlock on the gate. Swallowing hard, I turned back to the others. We're locked in, I told them. Dun, dun, dun. Chapter 21. What? Dad stared at me, his face twisted in confusion. She repeats that they're locked in. She shows him the lock. It's like, clang, it's a lock. Mom's like, that's impossible. They can't lock people inside, but you know. Forget it, Mom. It's horror land. Maybe it's another joke, Luke suggested. At what point are people going to admit that nothing here is funny? I lifted the heavy padlock again. It doesn't look like a joke, Luke. Where is everyone? Luke demanded. They got to let us leave. They've got to. Let's try to stay calm, Dad said, putting a hand on Luke's shoulder. There's no reason to panic. This is a strange place, but we're not in any danger, he said, based on nothing. He's right, Mom broke in. There's no reason to be afraid. We'll be out of here and on our way home in no time. As soon as we get out, I'll buy you guys pizzas and big cold drinks, Dad promised. And we'll all have a good laugh about our terrifying adventures today in Horrorland. What were Mom and Dad doing this whole time? Like, I'd love to know. Like, were they just... Were they just milling around? They might not be very good parents. Lizzie suggests climbing the fence, but it's like 
20 feet tall and everyone's like no and she's like yeah you're right my bad that was a bad idea hold on lizzie dad said soothingly we have to find one of those costumed park workers they'll tell us how to get out um dad i turned and saw luke grab dad's arm here they come we all uttered astonished cries as we saw the horrors crossing the plaza dozens of them a few seconds before the plaza had been empty now it was filled with green costumed horrors marching toward us spreading out preparing to surround us what are they going to do clay cried what are they going to do to us dun 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 a cool thing that just happened was um i got up to give my cat some food because he was like upset out there so i wanted to make sure he was okay I went out to check on him, and he needed more food, so I went to give him more food. Ultimately, that's what it was. But uh, mainly, I got up to check on him, and I tripped over my light and my camera. So if my camera looks a little... If my angle looks a little different, it's because I'm so clumsy for some reason right now. Uh, we huddled together as the horrors marched silently toward us. The only sound was the soft thud of their monster feet on the pavement and their long purple tails dragging on the ground. Listen, I was going to say this earlier because it felt really obvious to me, but I didn't. But I'm just going to throw this out there. These are clearly not costumes, right? Like, they're clearly not. Or, like, maybe they are, but they take them off and they're different kinds of monsters. These are not costumed people they are not costumed human beings they are monsters for sure but i've said the same thing about mickey mouse and was proven wrong time and time again so what do you know you know we had our backs against the iron fence we stared helplessly at the grinning green faces the bulging yellow eyes which appeared to be laughing cruelly at us finally they stopped a few feet in front of us the plaza was still and silent. I took a deep breath and then cried out, What do you want? The sound of my own voice startled me. One of the horrors, a young woman, How can you tell? Stepped forward. Frightened, I tried to back up, but my back was already pressing against the fence. What do you want? I repeated in a trembling voice. The costumed horror stared at us one by one. I want to thank you, she said in a cheery voice. That's what we're going with. I'm the Horrorland MC. We all want to thank you for being our guests today. She flashed us a warm smile. You mean we can go? Luke demanded. Of course, the horror said, grinning warmly. But first, we all want to thank you for appearing on Horrorland Hidden Camera. The dozens of horrors behind her broke into applause and loud cheers. See the cameras? The MC asked. She gestured up to two tall poles in the plaza. Raising my eyes to the top, I saw two TV cameras. You mean we were on TV? Luke cried. Since the moment you arrived... The MC replied, Our hidden cameras followed you everywhere. From the hilarious scene where we blew up your car, our cameras were with you. Oh my god. And I know our home audience loved the terrified expressions on your faces and all of your horrified screams as you took our Horrorland rides. Now wait a minute, Dad said angrily. He took a step forward. You say this is a TV show? How come I've never seen it? We're seen every weekend on the Monster Channel, the horror replied. Oh, Dad replied quickly. We don't have cable. You should get it, the horror told him. You're missing a lot of great, scary shows on the Monster Channel. Well, you've been a very good sport, the MC continued, her yellow eyes bouncing in front of her head as she talked. We've enjoyed having you, and to show our appreciation, we have a brand new car waiting for you in the park lot is it full of all their stuff they have to pay taxes on it though <laughs> more cheers and applause from the horrors a new car excellent luke exclaimed does that mean we can leave clay asked timidly the horror nodded yes it's time for you to leave the real exit is right over there through that doorway she pointed to a tall green building near the end of the fence this feels like the end of portal where they're like just go through there and you'll get cake. And we all know how that turned out. She pointed to a tall green building near the end of the fence. I saw a yellow door on the side. Take the yellow door, 
the horror instructed, and thanks again for appearing on Horrorland Hidden Camera. As all the horrors clapped their big green hands, we stepped away from the fence and hurried toward the exit. I can't believe we were on TV the whole time, Mom declared. We've gotta get cable, Luke told Dad. I reached the yellow door first and pulled it open. I stepped into an enormous room with white walls that shone under the bright white lights from the ceiling. Is this the exit? I said. As soon as we were all inside, the door slammed shut with a bang that made my heart skip. Portal on the wall! Portal on the wall! Then all the lights went out. Welcome to the Horrorland Challenge, boomed a deep, frightening voice over a loudspeaker. You have one minute to go through the monster obstacle course, the voice thundered. Please keep in mind that the games are now over. This is real. You are playing for your life. Dun, dun, dun! Who could have seen this coming? We've been tricked, I heard Dad cry angrily. And then he shouted at the top of his lungs, Let's get out of here! Run! The deep voice boomed. You have 56 seconds. Dad started to shout again, but we stopped when a dim light came up and a disgusting four-armed creature stepped toward us. <laughs> Yuck. The size of a gorilla, the monster had huge green eyes surrounded by thick red fur over its face. Saliva drooled from its mouth, and as it opened its jaws wider, two rows of long fangs slid over its thin, purple lips. It's me! Don't just stand there. Run! This is an obstacle course, the voice boomed impatiently. You have... Fifty seconds to live. At least make a good race of it. The monster uttered a low growl and lumbered toward us in the dim light. Its jaws were open wide as if preparing to bite. Its four enormous clawed hands swiped at the air in front of it. I was too stunned to move, too frightened to run, but suddenly I felt a hand grab mine and tug me hard. It was Dad, I realized, trying to pull me to safety. I heard the boys screaming in fear. I felt Mom brush beside me as we started to stumble forward. Run! Run! <laughs> the deep voice urged over the shrieks of the two boys. So they run. They're running. The monster roars. It swipes at Dad and misses. Close one. They hurtle past it, and then there are two giant birds. And they're squawking, and they're flapping their wings, and then suddenly they're being chased by six growling pig-like creatures with sharp-pointed teeth, and everyone's screaming, and then there's like a fur-covered snake which is really just a good scarf. And they're running and they're running and they're running. 20 seconds left to live, says the voice on the loudspeaker. Lizards and other kinds of animals that are just wrong and things you don't want chasing you, even if they aren't monster versions, like bears and stuff, are happening. Uh, and then Luke's like, help me, and then birds, and then more birds. And the voice is like 10 seconds, and then... And they're just, like, running around. It's very, it's very intentionally disorienting, but in a way that isn't fun to read. Do you know what I mean? But anyway, the point is, Lizzie falls down, and a giant furry monster is, like, about to step on her with its foot. And she's like, I'm, I'm gonna die right here, I guess. I'm not gonna make it. Dun, dun, dun. It's very bleak, but there are, like, five more chapters, so. Chapter 24. The enormous flat foot lowered over me slowly, steadily. The monster was taking its time. That's kind of bullshit. Oh, I couldn't catch my breath. I couldn't squirm away. I shut my eyes and waited for the pain. The jarring blast of a buzzer made my eyes shoot open. The monster raised its heavy foot from my body. The floor shook under its weight as it began to lumber away. Am I alive? I wondered. The buzzer echoed in my ear, then it abruptly stopped. The loudspeaker crackled on. Time's up, a woman's voice said. The voice of the Horrorland MC who had led us to this terrifying obstacle course. What a thrilling race! I groaned and started to pull myself up. In the dim light, I saw that all the monsters had vanished. That was a tough battle, the MC continued over the loudspeaker. Do we have any survivors? Yes, we do, the deep booming voice replied. How many survivors do we have in there? The woman asked. Three, the booming voice replied. Three survivors out of five. Dun, dun, dun. Who do you think they killed? I can't even guess. Chapter 25, let's find out. Where were mom and dad? Were they both killed by the monsters? Three out of five. No. I finally found my voice and let out a horrified wail that echoed off of the walls. Excuse me, 
A slight mistake. The deep voice boomed. Make that five out of five survivors. Wow, for a robot, this thing sure is bad at math. That's so stupid. I'm drinking. That's so dumb. That was just done for the cliffhanger. That's so dumb. So dumb. Five out of five, the Horrorland MC exclaimed. A new record. We've never had a perfect score before. Let's give them a round of applause, everyone. I took a deep breath and held it, trying to stop my trembling. They're okay, I thought happily. Mom and Dad are okay. And then I saw them. They had their arms around Luke and Clay and were making their way toward me. We're okay, I cried, rushing to them, my arms outstretched. We're okay. All five of us huddled in the center of the dark room, hugging each other and sobbing. Dad's arm was bleeding from a deep gash. <laughs> Yikes. This was a weirdly high-stakes book, considering the silliness of the premise. Aside from that, we were shaken, but not hurt. So, like, fuck you, Dad, I guess. Now what? Luke asked in a trembling voice. Are they gonna let us go? They can't get away with this, Dad said angrily. They can't do this to people and get away with it. I don't care if it is on TV. How do we get out? Luke demanded. Will they let us out? We all started chattering at once, our voices high and frightened. Suddenly, the ceiling lights flashed on, flooding the room with bright light, and the MC's voice broke through our frightened conversation. Let's bring our winners out with a round of applause, she announced cheerfully. We all cried out as the floor began to tilt beneath us. I grabbed onto Dad, and we started to slide. Yikes. The floor tilted down like a sliding board, and we slid out of the room and landed in the plaza outside. Still feeling dazed, I jumped quickly to my feet as the Horrorland MC hurried to greet us. The big crowd of horrors behind her was clapping and cheering. You can't do this to us, I said. I was so angry, I didn't know what I was doing. I just totally freaked. I leaped at the woman, grabbing the top of her mask, and started to pull it off with both hands. You can't do this to us, you can't, I shrieked. Let me see your face. Let me see who you are. This is the boldest 12-year-old. I like her a lot, actually. Using all of my strength, I gave the mask a hard tug, and then I screamed and let go as I realized the truth. Dun, dun, dun. What do you think the truth is, gang? I bet it's what I thought it was. Chapter 26. She wasn't wearing a mask. The monstrous green face was her face. She wasn't wearing a monster costume. None of the horrors were wearing costumes. I stepped back, raising my hands in horror. Okay, he has said the word horror so many times as a noun. He needs to think of a different word when he wants to use it as an adjective. He can't use it over and over and over again as a noun and then just be like, and also as an adjective, I guess. There are other words for this feeling. There are so many. You write goosebumps. Surely you know at least a couple of them. Come on, RL. I'm gonna drink. I'm mad about it. Uh-oh. I stepped back, raising my hands in horror, as if trying to shield myself. You're, you're really monsters, I stammered. They nodded back at me. Their yellow eyes bobbed gleefully. But you said this was a TV show, I stammered to the horror MC. Her bulging yellow eyes gazed at me. We're happy to say it is the top rated show on the Monster Channel, she said cheerily. Thanks to great contestants like you and your family. The Monster Channel is watched by nearly two million monsters all over the world. That's actually very impressive. That's, a, that's some good numbers. People don't always take us seriously, she continued. People come to Horrorland and think it's all a big joke. People laugh at the signs around the park. They laugh at the rides and attractions. But it's all very serious to us. All of it. My father stepped up beside me, shaking a fist angrily. You can't do this to innocent people, he shouted. You can't bring people into this park and torture them. Oh, I'm sorry. Our time is up, the MC interrupted. I'm sad to say it's time to say goodbye to our special guests for this week. Now wait, Dad shouted. The crowd of horrors silently pushed forward. We had no choice but to start moving with them. Let me show you people the way we say goodbye on Horrorland Hidden Camera, the MC said. Dad tried to hold back to resist, but several horrors bumped up against him. They were bumping all of us now, pushing us toward what appeared to be a round purple pond just beyond the plaza. We couldn't fight back. There were too many of them. We couldn't run. They had us surrounded. 
In a few seconds, we were standing at the edge of the purple pond. A foul smell rose up from the pond. The purple liquid bubbled and gurgled, making a sick sucking sound gross. Let us go, Luke cried shrilly. We want to go home. The Horrorland MC ignored his frantic pleas and stepped to the edge of the gurgling pond. Saying goodbye is always sad, she said. So we try to have a little fun with our farewells. We all stared at the MC as she raised a large rock in one hand and held it over the disgusting, bubbling pond. Watch, she instructed us with a smile. She let the rock drop into the pond. As soon as it touched the thick surface, it was pulled down with a loud sucking sound. See how easy it is to say goodbye, the horror said, turning to us. Now, will you jump in or do you want to be pushed? Dun, dun, dun. I have like one sip left in this, so it better be good. Silently, the horrors began moving in on us. Closer, closer. Backing up, Clay tripped over my foot and nearly fell into the gurgling purple pit. I grabbed him and held on to him until he regained his balance. All five of us were standing at the edge of the pit. The sour odor swept over me. I felt sick. The thick purple slime lapped up at my ankles as if reaching out to grab me. Without realizing it, we were all holding hands. I'm real sorry, Dad murmured to us, ignoring the MC. I'm real sorry I brought you here. I didn't know. His voice broke. He lowered his eyes. This is so heavy. Dad, it's not your fault, I told him, squeezing his hand. And as I squeezed his hand, I had an idea. A wild idea. A stupid idea. A really crazy idea. I knew I had to try it. It was the only idea I had. People laugh at everything in the park, the Horrorland MC had told us, but it's all very serious to us. All very serious. Very serious. Oh my god, she's gonna pinch them. Oh my god, she's gonna- She stood right in front of me now, waiting for us to jump to her deaths, eager for us to get sucked down into the purple slime. I knew this was my last chance. I knew it was crazy, but I knew I had to try it. I stepped up to the MC, reached out, and pinched her arm as hard as I could. Yes, girl, get it. Yes. This isn't even done, done, done. This feels triumphant. I'm not gonna drink. This is triumphant. Chapter 28. Her mouth opened wide and she let out a startled gasp. She tried to pull her arm away, but I held on and pinched harder. She tried to pull her arm away, but I held and pinched harder. Her yellow eyes rolled around crazily. No, she pleaded. <laughs> I guess. And then I was the one to cry out as her mouth opened wide and with a loud whoosh, a rush of air escaped her lips. I leaped back. As the air rushed from her mouth, she appeared to deflate just like a balloon. I gaped in amazement as she folded helplessly to the ground. An angry cry rose up from the crowd of horrors. Inflate her, one of them yelled. Inflate her immediately. They began moving in on us, growling and grumbling. Pinch them, I shouted to my family. Pinch them. She pinches another horror. And a whoosh. They deflate. And then and then Luke does one too. And then they're just pinching everybody. Pinch, pinch, pinch. Pinch, pinch. Taking a long, deep breath, I happily watched the horrors flee. Let's get out of here, I shouted. I started running toward the front gate. The others followed close behind. The gate was open now. I guess the horrors had opened it, figuring the only place we were heading was to the bottom of the purple pond. Without looking back, we ran out into the empty parking lot and stopped. No car, I murmured. Yeah, <laughs> remember? In all the excitement, I had forgotten that our car had been blown up. How? That's a big ask, RL. In regards to suspension of disbelief, okay? I let out a weary sigh. I felt as if I were deflated, just like the horrors. It's too far to walk, Luke wailed. How do we get out of here? The buses, Mom cried, of course, pointing. I turned my eyes to a row of purple and green buses parked on the side of the lot. I guess you could call them Debus Ex Machinas. <laughs> <laughs> they glowed under the bright afternoon sun. Yeah, Dad cried excitedly. Maybe we can start one up and get away from here. We started jogging over the pavement to the buses. Cross your fingers, Dad called, leading the way. Hurry, Luke shouted suddenly. They're coming. You don't have to be afraid of them. You know how to defeat them. You literally just have to use your fingers. Sure enough, the horrors were pouring out of the park, chasing after us. No one ever escapes, a horror shouted. Hurry, Luke cried. They're gonna catch us. Dun, dun, dun. I'm not afraid of them anymore. Chapter 29. With the horrors close behind, shouting and threatening us, we ran full speed toward the row of buses. The horrors are shouting things like, you can't escape, and like, give up, and they're chasing after them, but it's like, whatever, you know? The door to the first bus was open, 
Dad got there, scrambled up the steps and inside. Mom stepped in, followed by the two boys, and then I pulled myself in and the bus door slid shut behind me. The keys are there. Everyone's very excited about it. The engine coughed and started up with a roar. Dad lowered his foot on the gas pedal and the bus shot forward. I stumbled down the aisle and fell into a seat behind Luke and Clay. We're okay, Dad cried. We're out of here. We laughed and celebrated all the way home. The drive took hours and hours, but we didn't care. We were safe. We had escaped. It was night when Dad pulled the bus up our driveway. Home sweet home, I cried joyfully. We all piled eagerly out of the bus. I took a deep breath and stretched. The air smelled so sweet and fresh. A full moon made the front lawn shine. Then I saw him. It was a horror. And he was clinging to the back of our bus. Oh no, I cried out. What are you doing there? Dad demanded. Did you ride there the whole way home? Luke asked in disbelief. Yeah, that's fair. I shrank back as the horror let go of the bus and slid to the ground. Why are you afraid of them? You know how to beat them and you are... He's outnumbered. Clay and Luke hid behind Dad. Mom's mouth dropped open in fright. What do you want? I cried. He reached out his green hand. Here, he said. We forgot to give you your free passes for next year. And that's the end of this book. Honestly, this book was so goddamn wild. Like... A lot of Goosebumps books sort of have, like, at least one foot grounded in reality. Like, even Vampire Breath spent a lot of time establishing these kids were from the real world. The real world has rules. Blah, blah, blah. And, frankly, even the Vampire Castle followed the rules of the real world. Like, it felt very, like, like what was allowed and what wasn't allowed was established. But in this, like, nothing was beyond the realm of ridiculous. From the second the car blew up in chapter two, like it was batshit the whole time. This is the craziest book I've ever read. I know I'm always kind of blown away by the nonsense in these books, but this one is objectively the craziest one I've ever read. Like, hands down, no question. But I loved it. This was amazing. RL just fully went off the rails with this, and I can't respect it more, honestly. He had fun. He had fun with this one is the thing. And I love that for him. I love that journey for him. Uh, let's do, attempt to remember to do an outro here. I want to say thank you to everyone on my Patreon, to the people who voted to have this be the book we read this time. It was so good. Um, if you join my Patreon, you too can vote on what the next book will be. And I'm going to link it below. I've been streaming on Twitch. If you guys want to go see that, I'm also going to link that below. I have merch. I'm going to link that below. Everything's going to be linked below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're all doing Doing well out there. I hope you're all staying safe and have a wonderful Halloween, a low key responsible Halloween, but a wonderful Halloween nonetheless. And I guess just uh, stay spooky out there, you know? I'll see you next time. Peace out.